What's up guys, in this video, I went through my past catalog and went ahead and found the best examples that I could find of me teaching, being able to find the distance between two points, being able to find the midpoint between two points, and being able to find the endpoint when given a midpoint as well as an endpoint. All three of the examples are inside this video. I hope you enjoy. So when we're looking at determining the distance, this is question number 10. When we're looking at determining the distance between two points, one of the main things we want to make sure we do is we label our points per the distance formula. All right? So what we're going to do, could you make sure you check into that other seat? Check into the other seat, yeah, so you can see up there. There you go. So if you remember, we have this label that's x1. This will be x2, y1, and then y2. All right? Label the points. Then, because the reason why we're going to label them, because if I'm asking you to find the distance, we talked about the distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. OK? So it's just going to be the sum of your two coordinates, and then you square them. Just make sure you're adding x2 and x1 um, to there. So now, to find the distance, I just take x2, which I notice x2 I wrote here as 8, minus x1, which is a negative 2, plus y2, which is a 3, minus a negative 1. All right? So then what I'll go ahead and do is now let's go and simplify this. So 8 minus a negative 2 is going to be 10. 10 squared is going to be 100. So remember, guys, what we're doing here is we're applying our order of operations. We're doing inside the parentheses first, and then we're doing the powers. 3 minus a negative 1 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Then you have 100 plus, 106, 100, 100 plus 16 is going to be 116. All right, And for right now, I'll just have you guys leave it as, that, uh, as a radical. We always want to look into see if we can simplify it, which in this case, actually, we could simplify this. Um, so that would be 25, that's 20, 29, I believe. 29 goes in there. 4 goes in there 29 times. 4. Yeah? For the second part, or the third part, I'm not sure. You're just taking x2 and y1 and putting them together. Yep, I'm just plugging them in. I just labeled x1, y1, and x2, y2. Huh? Yes, I subtracted the x's and the y's together. Yep. And notice that each one of those have different. Um, and then we can go ahead and simplify this. Um, we're not going to talk, though, so much about simplifying. If you guys just want to leave your answer um, in that form, we will get over how to do the simplifying. Um, but I do believe I could take out um, a 4. That would mean the square root of 29. So let me just write out the answer. I believe it could be 2. Square root of 49, 49. I believe. I have to go and double check. Ladies and gentlemen, when we took our test, I think about 95% of us did not get this problem right. And part of that reason was when I gave you guys this problem on the homework, a lot of you just didn't make sure that you got this problem correct. So we really need to make sure that we understand this and go through it. Now, the first thing I would say with this, Christian, when doing a problem like this, if they give you two points and maybe you don't understand it, let's plot them and see exactly what they're talking about. All right? So if I plot these two points, all right, it doesn't say to graph them, but maybe this might help me understand what I'm supposed to do. So it says determine the endpoint for AC given C is negative 5, 4. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Does everybody agree that's point C? Yes? And then B is going to be at negative 2, up 5. OK? Negative 2, comma 5. But ladies and gentlemen, what they say is that's the midpoint. Right? They don't say find the midpoint. Right? They didn't say find the midpoint. The question says determine the endpoint. So we need to go back to our formula. And what does our formula say? The formula says our midpoint 
the formula for the midpoint looks like this. x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. That's the formula for the midpoint. If I want to find the midpoint between two points, what I'm simply going to do is add the two points up and then divide by 2. Correct? All right. So that's simply what I need to do for that type of problem. Now, the issue is they already give me the midpoint. So I have from here to here, but what I need to do is I need to figure out where is this other endpoint, right? Where is that le second left hand of the point? So um, Zeth, I'm going to have to ask you to move over there because I really need you to be paying attention for this one. Um, so when we're looking at this, we want to find out what this midpoint is. So what I can say, ladies and gentlemen, is x1 plus x2 divided by 2, that equals my x coordinate of my midpoint, which is negative 5. Yes? This plus this, my x1, x2 divided by 2, that equals my midpoint coordinate. Oh, I'm sorry, as b, so that equals negative 2. Sorry, that equals my value of negative 2. That's the x coordinate of my midpoint. So then I look and I say, do, what two points were I given? Well, the only x point I was given was negative 5. I just don't know what x2 is. I don't know what this point is. And that's what I'm trying to determine. I don't know what this point is. So that's what I'm trying to determine. So then I go to, well, what about the y? I know what the one y coordinate was. The one y coordinate was 4. And I know the answer was 5. But I don't know what y2 was. So what I'll write is 4, or yeah, 4 plus y2 divided by 2 equals, what was the y coordinate of my midpoint? 5. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I need to solve to find x1 and x2. Or I'm sorry, y2 and, and y2 and x2. Why? Because y2 and x2 tell me what my other endpoint is. Because remember, to find the midpoint, you take your endpoint plus your endpoint, divide them by 2 for each coordinate, and that's how you find the midpoint. But in this case, I'm only giving you the midpoint and one endpoint. So we need to find the other endpoint. So therefore, now let's just go and solve. So to do that, I need to get the 2 off the denominator. So I multiply 2 on both sides. Therefore, now those divide to 1. Those divide to 1. So I'm left with a negative 5 plus x2 equals negative 4. Here I'm left with a 4 plus y2 equals 10. Now to solve for x2, I add 5. Here to solve for y2, I subtract 4. So therefore, x2 equals 1. Here, y2 equals 6. And that's your endpoint. 1, comma, 6. And does that look like that would be the endpoint, ladies and gentlemen? Over 1, up 6? Yeah, that works. OK? Now what we want to do is find that midpoint, right? What is the point in between that line? So previously, we determined, yes, Sierra? I just need to. Oh, okay. So previously, we determined that when we have a line, right, to determine the midpoint, we just added the disk, we added our two points, and then divided by two. Well, to determine the midpoint, we're going to do the exact same thing, but now, we, in this case, we have two coordinates. So if I want to determine the midpoint, I need to find the midpoint for the x, bear, the x point, or the, the x coordinates, and the y coordinates. So to find the midpoint of the x coordinates, right? the x coordinates go along that line, I'm just going to do x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And to find the midpoint of my y coordinates, I just need to add y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And that's how you find your midpoint. So what I'm going to do is now let's just add my point. So x1 should be negative 3 plus 3 divided by 2, comma, 4 plus 5 divided by 2. I'm sorry, 4 plus 1 divided by 2. So therefore, the midpoint in my example, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So it would be 0 over 2, comma, 5 halves. So the final answer is just going to be 0, comma, which is 
is actually right there. Does that look about right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 